I think it's safe to say that that initial concept art release of Z two years ago was a big mistake by Intel. It set very high expectations with basically nothing to show for it for many, many months. I mean, heck, for the first year after that, a lot of the sources I talked to thought Z on desktop would never be a real thing. However, I think it's also been clear that over the last six months, at least from my reporting, and that's based on the people I've talked to, the optimism for Z has been growing. It's been more and more likely that it's coming out and more and more likely that it will be competitive. And, well, guys, I don't have all good news, but I've got more good news than any of my previous DG2 reports in this video. With how much NVIDIA and Radeon are turning the desktop graphics market into a duopoly with ever-rising prices, I think that what I'm about to show can be considered as disruptive and exactly what this market needs. So... Without further ado, let's talk about this. And yes, this is the back of the ZDG2 test sample that I've been looking at over the past few months. Remember, I first leaked pictures of Z two months ago exclusively. When I look at this, I'm not someone that really specializes in analyzing PCBs or dyes. So I'm going to let you guys out there, people better equipped to look at this and estimate die sizes and such. But while I don't have all of the same information Igor has, one thing that I do find interesting is just how well that BGA lineup is with the back of this PCB. It's very clear that at least some of it comes from some very good information because look how well it lines up with what I have for that PCB. And so... Look, what I showed is an early test sample for Z, one that has a lot of noise on the back of it and could potentially just completely be missing things that will be on the PCB of the final die. For sure, that's true. So what I will say is this, though. ZDG2, the top model, is clearly bigger than Navi 23, but likely to be smaller than GA-104. You know, roughly we're thinking of kind of like a, a Navi-22 size die, but there are some huge margins for error here considering how early my sample is. What I'll say, though, is if it is indeed a bit bigger than Navi-22, that makes a lot of sense because it has a bigger bus, and despite not having infinity cash, it could just understandably then perform as good or better than a 3070 considering TSMC's node is better than Samsung's node and its die isn't that far away from the size of a 3070's die. But if it's smaller than Navi 22 and it still ends up beating the 3070, this is going to be quite the accomplishment for Intel. And well, yeah, on that note, let's stop jumping all over the place here. Let's get into my new resummary of information that has exciting news about performance and release dates and volume. But first, an ad from a sponsor. You know, no matter what platform I use for a main benchmarking station, one thing that I always know will be true is that a long-term sponsor of mine, CDK Offers, will most likely be providing the keys. CDKoffers.com is a keys website with legitimate keys that supplies PlayStation, Xbox, and Windows software keys at a reasonable price for what you're paying for. Nobody wants to overpay for anything, including over $100 for Windows. You don't need to get a legitimate professional key of Windows 10 for a reasonable price from CDKoffers.com. And make sure you use the offer code BROKENSILICON to get a big discount on Windows software and die shrink to get a reasonable discount on everything on the website. Go to CDKoffers.com today and make sure they know Moore's Law is Dead sent you. Okay, ZHPG info from late May of this year. Let's first resummarize top ZDG2 specs, and there is new information to communicate. The top model, 512 execution units, is now boosting above 2.2 gigahertz in some samples. The last leak I did in April was mostly in up to 2.2, but now it seems like there are some boosting at 2.3 and 2.4. For now, I'm just going to confirm above 2.2 until I get, hopefully, even more optimistic information in the future. Additionally, still 16 gigabytes of GDR6 over 256-bit bus. This is like 500% confirmed by me and others for, I mean, thank you. I think I've confirmed this like over a year ago. 
Uh, and the TDP, this is a big deal now, is now targeting below 235 watts. Now, both me and Igor are communicated. I did first, actually, the 275-watt TDP, I believe late last year, if not early this year. And now others have been saying the same thing after I already confirmed that. But what I'm told now is that the latest samples, that the target really is around day 6700 XT or a 3070, that this thing might not be any less efficient than its competition at the time of its release. And again, I'm just saying this, initially designed for TSMC's N6 Note. I'm 100% sure that that was the initial plan. But still, when I see tons of rumors about upcoming products being on TSMC 6 nanometer, what is it? There's that PS5 rumor, which I can't verify, but then also potentially the IO die for Zen 4, and then also a new Qualcomm chip, which will have tons of volume. I do start to doubt it a little bit. Let's just leave it at that for now. And here's a really exciting thing. Z is now performing just below a 3080 in some region benchmarks that I've seen. Now, it's worth mentioning that I've always communicated between a 3070 and a 3080. And I do not expect it to beat the 3080, especially not overall. But at this point, I would be surprised if it lost to the 3070. Um, although, I, you know, it's not like I've seen benchmarks for like 30 games or something. So for all I know, what they benchmark favors Z's architecture. But again... Yeah, it, it's above the 3070. Everyone refers to this as a 3070 Ti in rasterization with ray tracing that is competitive in recent releases. Although everyone I speak to believes NVIDIA will still have the edge per segment that this competes with in ray tracing. Um, yep, ZDG2 will have a full launch in quarter one of 2022. A paper or very limited launch in quarter four isn't entirely impossible, but I do not believe it is possible for full volume to hit this year, which isn't unexpected. I already communicated it's unlikely to launch this year in my last leak. The volume and delivery dates of components that I've seen are what make me say this. There's no way the full volume comes out this quarter, but... The amount of components that were just ordered by Intel suggest a big launch in quarter one. Not a whimper, but a splash they're trying to make. And some AIBs may know almost nothing about Z, but you have to think about how many of the biggest AIBs are exclusive to AMD, like Sapphire, or exclusive to NVIDIA, like Zotac, like EVGA. So... It's not surprising that a lot of them, right, who have these deals with the other companies aren't partnering with Z right now. But I do know of one of the major ones is now likely one of Intel's main partners. I can't say which one it is, though. And additionally, a 128 execution unit die should follow shortly after the 512 execution unit model, if not around the same time. And the 256 model, again, and I said this in my last week, has been mentioned by all sources. I know there's 384 execution unit rumors going around but i don't know just part of me goes i wonder if that was just a engineering sample i don't know why they would launch not just cut down the 512 to 384 I, that's just what i'm thinking though you know all i can confirm from my end right now is 512 and 256 and 128 should be models and that the successor is elasti i already said this in my last leak but i have other sources confirming it elasti is what dg3's code name is and again Intel is currently working on a DLSS competitor, although it would not surprise me if they ultimately adopted FSR. Raja does like open standards. And there is a new piece of software being played with right now for smoother frame delivery than the competition. It's all I know right now, but I'll update it if I get more information. And Intel is confident they can crush other media encoders with ZDG2. This will be a major selling point. And additionally, what I can confirm now, although I can't say all of the specs, is that there is a 256-bit model. There is a 192-bit model. There is a 128-bit model. There's a 64-bit model. I can't confirm execution units per model on here. But again, I believe Igor's already leaked something that lines up with this. So I would say just look at his if you want some direction. Although again, even though I'm confirming 192-bit as a model, I can't rule out that it's just being cut down from the main die. And the same for the 64 to the 128 bit. Okay. And finally, I continue to hear that ZDG2 is going to be priced aggressively. I, I continue to hear this. And so I just, I think that when you consider that this is launching over a year after when RDNA 2 and Ampere launched, that... It makes sense for Intel to do a $350 to $500 price point. They're ordering a ton of components. This will be very high volume, and they need to make a splash. This is their first real attempt at a dedicated graphics card. So I really do believe 
that this can make a huge difference in the market in quarter 2021. Okay, so what else is there really to say about this leak? Obviously, it's exciting. It's universally more optimistic now from everyone I talk to about these Z products. And let's keep in mind, just about eight months ago, half of the sources that I've been talking to for this information were not optimistic. Some of them, in fact, were like saying they were 99% sure ZDG2 is never coming out. So it's not like this is all Intel hype sources. A lot of these people have been pretty damn negative about Intel for the majority of the time I've talked to them. But it's not sounding that way anymore. And at the very least, it sounds like no matter what the performance level is, whether it's around a 3070 or close to a 3080, which I do believe it's starting to get, again, pretty much firmly confirmed to be a 3070 Ti at the very top, it sounds like it's going to be priced right for what the performance is. And this is potentially huge for the market next year. You know, people, I've been seeing new egg shuffles for 6,900 XTs that are priced above $2,000. And you still have to wait for a shuffle. That's just ridiculous. And someone else needs to enter this market. Someone else needs to enter this market who has more supplies on hand to not be held back by shortages. But someone is Intel. Intel has a huge, unrivaled supply chain with some products that haven't sold as well as they wanted them to. So they've got some, obviously they're not all applicable to what's going into these graphics cards, but let's say Intel's got a stockpile of stuff here that from what I'm hearing, they can really supply things well. And You've got to remember that the shortages are not just TSMC capacity. It's substrate now, guys. Substrate is hard to get no matter what node you're using. That's a modern node. Whether it's at Samsung, whether it's at TSMC, whether it's at Global Foundries. There are issues with the power components at all of these foundries right now. It is not TSMC capacity anymore. Substrate is the problem. And getting new substrate suppliers, there's a lot of verifications and requirements to becoming one of those, too. The nodes that AMD and NVIDIA and soon Intel use for their graphics cards. It takes time to bring those people online. You can't just get them overnight, new suppliers. So all of this is to say that it sounds like the substrate issues should be mostly alleviated by quarter two of next year. Now, things should, as I continue to communicate, slowly get better until then. But but that's really when things will be fixed. And that's, that's right around when ZDG2 is launching. So... Uh, think about what I'm kind of saying here. You know, if you're looking at Newegg Shuffle right now and you're considering paying $2,000 for a 6900 XT or $3,000 for some ridiculous AIB 3080 Ti soon, consider that not only could there be a new competitor that is eager to prove itself, Intel, launching competitively priced graphics cards at the mid-range and high volume, but you could also have the substrate issue get alleviated as well early next year. If money is no object to you, I get why you would buy something now if you need it for work. But if money is an issue for you, I don't know. Look, 2019 was a good time to buy. Early 2020 was fine. And in fact, if you sold your 2080 Ti right after Ampere was announced, I mean, right before Ampere was announced, you could have bought it back at half the price for a few months. But late 2020, things changed. 2021, from start to finish so far, we're almost halfway through the year, has just been the worst year to build a PC. And while Alder Lake will be impressive, I think it's not going to be cheap. And, I mean, maybe there will be discount Zen 3 before the end of the year, uh, but I find that unlikely. This just does not seem like the year to go all out unless you have a ton of money to burn. But next year, you know, the alleviation of substrate issues, the launch of a new graphics card competitor who's eager to prove themselves, you know, hot on the heels of sampling new Ampere cards about mid next year, as I've already reported, and RDNA 3 coming out right after ZDG2 and probably being more competitive than even RDNA 2 was with NVIDIA, you know, right before Zen 4, right before Raptor Lake, I think next year's the year where things will hopefully get better. I think when it comes to silicon, demand's going to be higher than what we used to see for a very long time. Everything has computers now, cars, everything, and everyone is going to want more and more and more. But I just think now is still the worst time. And when I see how exciting Z is getting next to this other info, that's what I'm looking for. 
You know, I, I'm ready to do an AMD CPU, Intel GPU system if that encoding performance pans out. So, yeah, this is very exciting. And the only other thing I will report in this video is that it just on the whole, it sounds like inside Intel, things are much more copacetic now than I reported late last year. That Pat, Pat Gelsinger has really is getting along better with Raja and everyone else at the company than the previous CEO was. And that's very good news. So, yep. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to subscribe to Moore's Law is Dead. Ring the bell button. Share the video. Growing the community is so important. And if you want to become a bigger part of the community, remember, there is a Patreon that pays me, my brother, the co-host of Broken Silicon, Gerard, who edits for us. Our team gets paid by the Patreon, and we could not do this without them. And you'll get early ad-free access to Broken Silicon exclusive podcast, Die Shrink, access to other ad-free versions of podcast projects that we do, and the Discord where you can talk to me about this video after it comes out, and our entire community who would love to speak with you as well. All of that's there for you if you have the extra money. But otherwise, as always, thank you for watching.